you for one more day. Because you didn't have to give it to us, but you did. So for that, we thank you. First of all, we'll give an honor to Lord and Savior who's always the head of my house and life and allow me to be standing at his sacred desk at this time. To the right Reverend Adam J. Richardson, presiding bishop. To Dr. Tony S. Richardson, Episcopal supervisor. To the Reverend Mary W. Wright, presiding elder. And to the Reverend Sterling Barkley, senior, and his first lady, Velma, in their absence, I say good morning. Good morning. To this choir that has been on fire this morning. The Holy Ghost. So I say thank you. And to everyone else in their prospective places, to this ministerial staff, I say good morning. And to my aunt, Reverend Thomas, I say thank you for coming. And to this congregation, I thank the best congregation in African Methodist Episcopal Church. Not just the district, not just the Lavender Episcopal District, but throughout. I say good morning. And always to my family that, that's here and always support me. I, I say good morning to all of the guests here this morning and to my kids. And I say thank y'all for coming with, with being a preacher's son and daughter. Y'all in for a long ride, so <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and last but not least, so I, I, I got to say this anytime because, because I got to go home. I, I, I don't want to be calling you until uh, Dwayne saying I need to sleep at y'all house tonight <laughs> to my lovely wife. I, I say thank you for putting up with me and being with me on this journey. Amen. And also for guiding me sometimes when I get out of line. Yeah, yeah, I say thank you. You're welcome. Now I'm going to try not to tr trouble y'all along. And actually, when I say that, I'm going to try to get out of saying that. Because when you're in the house of the Lord, you shouldn't be troubled. So when you come to hear the word of God, the person that's delivering the message should be troubling you. If you're feeling troubled about the word of God, you need to be at this altar when the invitation of discipleship is open. So let us pray. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, as it comes now to preaching time, I ask you to use me as you see fit, Heavenly Father. Help me to deliver your word to your people. And as always, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. The text from today will be coming from two separate passages. The first will be Genesis 1, 1 and 3, and the next will be Matthew 28 and 18. And I'll be reading from the King James Version Bible. In Genesis 1, 1 and 3, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord and the Spirit of God moved unto the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Then Matthew 28 and 18 goes on to say, And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. See, there is a concept, my brothers and sisters, in the word of God that you and I cannot understand. See, when the word says all power is given unto me in heaven and earth, we, we, we can't understand what that means. See, see, the word omnipotent describes God as having all power. All power is a concept that we cannot wrap our minds around because there is nothing that we have to compare to it. See, see, when we learn, we go from the unknown to the revealed. And once we grab something and comprehend it, we proceed to the next thing. But, but when you get ready to, ready to spiritually put your arms around the almightiness of God, I'm telling you now, you'll get an excedrin headache. See, see, because there is nothing on this planet that comes near to having all power. And, and let me tell you now, the devil is a liar. 
He doesn't have all power. The federal government don't have all power. The president doesn't have all power. And contrary to their beliefs, the United Nations doesn't have all power. See, there is only one who holds all power. And he's the only one who can fix what's wrong. He's the only one who can heal diseases. He's the only one who can save what's lost. He's the only one who can bless what needs blessing. He's got all power. And yet, God who has all power never made anything with his mouth shut. Let me say that again. Because that's going to come back up in a minute. And yet, God who has all power never made anything with his mouth shut. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, if I may, I'm going to try to preach from this topic. Closed mouths don't get fed. Closed mouths don't get fed. See, in, in, in other words, what, 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 what I'd like to know is how can you praise him with your mouth shut? I, I'd like to know how you, you can, Brother Wayne. Pray a prayer with your lips locked. I, I like to know how you can offer thanksgiving and gratitude to God with your lips never parting. When, see, see, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah! Thank you, God, for saving me. See, when, when, when my mind begins to dwell on the goodness of God, and, and, and I, I got to act a little crazy sometimes. I got to go out of character sometimes. You know, because I, I, I just have to shout a little bit. Because he broke me out of the merry clay. He, he, he put my feet on solid rock. Even though I can't say the no, he put a song in my mouth. Even though I don't dance that much, he put a dance in my step. See, he wrote my name in the book of life and no devil in hell can take it out. The world is lining up with the word of God. The world is lining up with the word of God. And we are starting to see biblical prophecies concerning the end of time being fulfilled. So if there ever was a time we needed good church, it's now. If there ever was a time we needed spiritual church, it is now. If there ever was a time we needed emotional church, it is now. See, the only thing that is going to keep us from being seduced and deceived is the moving of the Holy Spirit and the power of another my brothers and sisters, closed mouths don't get fed. See, see, when we look back at Genesis 1, you will find that 10 times the phrase, and God said, is used. So, so what I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters, you will never get a fresh word from God if you don't let him move. He will always move before he speaks. That's why praise is important. That's why thanksgiving is important. That's why worship is important. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and grace in your heart. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. See, 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 church, praise isn't just a spiritual gymnastics. See, praise is the pathway into his presence. See, 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 when, we, when, when you come to church and, and, and you are struggling, Look at who you are sitting beside. If they are distracting and can't seem to pay attention, guess what's going to happen to you? But on the flip side of that, if you sit beside somebody and they're praising, you might be the distraction. And let me tell you, some of y'all can't afford to sit next to a non-praiser. I get mad at me today. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying you have to run the aisles every time you come into church. I'm not saying that you have to swing from the chandeliers. I'm not saying you have to beat the paint off the wall. But what I am saying, you ought to lift your hands. I am saying you ought to give some praise. I am saying you ought to I To you. See, he's attracted to worshipers. He's attracted to praises. He is attracted to those that will rejoice in the Lord at all times and praises shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boastful noise into the Lord. God didn't create anything with his mouth shut. 
as a matter of fact, when I think about it, there's so much power in God's mouth that, that, that when he gave all power to Jesus Christ, Jesus couldn't walk through a graveyard and say something without there being a resurrection. Yeah. See, see let, me, let, me, let me show you something, church. He, he didn't get Lazarus out of the grave because he was Jesus and he got it like that. He didn't get Lazarus out of the grave because he was full of wisdom, power, and might, and knowledge. He got Lazarus out of the grave because he opened his mouth and said, Lazarus, come forth. See, in other words, whatever might be dead in your life, if you can ask God to give you a word, if you can ask God to speak to you, he can resurrect your dreams. He can resurrect your faith. He can resurrect your hope. He can resurrect your joy because he has to speak to it. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I say again, closed mouths don't get fed. <laughs> Church, since I did this um, sermon, I, I, I try to, and y'all excuse me, I, I've been fasting for 12 hours. I say I try to fast before I preach. So the devil is trying to choke me up and make my mouth dry right now. <laughs> but we're not going to let him do that. See, since, since I prepared this this, this, this sermon, there, there are two things I, I, I try to pray for every day. And the first is, God, please protect me and deliver me from the spirit of deception. Yeah. And you might ask, well, well, well why, Brother Jordan, you, you, you pray that prayer. Well, this, this is why, if you and I are adulterers, our fornicators are immoral in any way, we don't need a preacher to talk to us. See, our conscience deals with us because we know we are immoral. Amen. If we are liars, thieves, or cheats, we don't need a preacher preaching the word of God to us because God's conscience that he put in each and every one of us will let us know we're doing wrong. But if you or I experience deception, now we need a preacher. Why? Because the deception of deception is deception. And a person who is being deceived doesn't even know they're being deceived. So see, I ask God every day now to protect me from the deception and not just external exception but from the deception that might come from within me yeah. see lord help me not to prevent my own understanding of the scriptures help me not to see things that are incorrect because the way that i understand them amen, amen. see sometimes we'll get in this bible and, and, and start reading and take what we want out of it right. and then go run with it we're, we're deceiving ourselves. So I pray that God would deliver me from deception. The, the, the second thing I, I, I pray is like David of old when he said, Do not silent into me, lest I be like them that go down into the pit. See, see, if, if you need, if you and I need anything in our lives, you don't need a new car. You don't need a new rifle. Some of us don't even need a new wife. Some of y'all don't need a new husband. You don't even need a new church. You don't need a new preacher. What you need is for God to talk. Y'all ain't coming to our church for every morning. If the Lord doesn't speak through the choir, if the Lord didn't speak through this choir this morning, it's just Christian entertainment. If God don't speak through me, then I'm just an orator. If God doesn't talk to us through the Bible, it's just another book. See, see, God, I need you to talk to me. God, I need you to chew me out. God, I need you to indict me. God, I need you to chastise me. But please, God, do not leave me alone. I need God to talk to me. I can be really stupid at times. I can be dumb at times. I can be alive at times. And I need the Holy Ghost to get hold of me sometimes and shake me up. Master, and ooh, mm, 
when you call the master, you open up something in the spirit. See, 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 see. Oh, you see me as the master of your diseases. You see me as the master of a heart, a heart attack. You see me as the master of your broken heart. You see me as the master of your divorce. You see me as the master of your children who are acting all kinds of crazy. You see me as the master of your church and the struggling it's going through. He said, once you see me as a master, I will show you just how much a master. for a minute. See, David said, what time I am afraid, I will trust in you. Yeah. See, don't let the, let, let the devil lie to you and, and tell you that fear and faith can't live in the same house. Uh -huh. See, see, because see, it can. See, you, you, you may not get everything that you want or he wants you to have, but fear cannot stop the moving of the hand of God. See, psychiatrists always try to deliver people from fear. Because they think that fear is an emotion that can be suppressed. See, they deal with the symptoms but not the root. And see, the root of fear is spiritual. See, the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and authority and a sound mind. See, see you have all this education in the world. We're so educated. We're so rich. We, 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 we so this. But it won't get rid of that spirit. I guarantee no money in this world that you have in that bank. You can't write a check to get rid of it. See, only a spirit can get rid of a spirit. See, a lot of church folks come up here and go to pray and they pray for faith. They pray for more faith. They pray for great faith. They pray for a childish faith. They pray for a deeper faith. They pray for an indwelling faith, a now faith. But that still will not get rid of fear. Because the antidote for fear is not faith. Well, let me tell you what the antidote is, church, because I know you're waiting on it. <laughs> Love is the antidote. Love is the antidote. See, perfect love cast out all fear. When you understand that love has got a hold of you, when you understand that love has saved you, when you understand that love has come back for you, love can't arrest that fear because you are loved by love and that will not let you go. See, that's why we need the love of God to reside in our lives. Love will drive away fear. Oh, my brothers and sisters, they woke up Jesus. Master, carries thou that we not perish. It wasn't the it was a fear that asked them. They were afraid, but their faith knew that there was more to Jesus than just flesh and stone. Yeah. And some of us got to realize that today there is more to Jesus than flesh and stone. There is more to Jesus than any man known that's living right now. Oh, they said, Master, carries. Thou not we perish. When Jesus walked to the bow of the boat, he said, Peace, peace. be still. Peace. And actually, that's, that, that, that's not what he said. That was what he was meant in the translation of the original language. That's what best describes that, that, that interpretation. But what he actually said was, Be thou muzzled. Uh -huh. Now, now, brother, brother, brother Joe, why, why, why would he say it like that? See, because that's the voice of a superior speaking to an inferior. Those of you that have dogs now, let that old dog get out there barking in the backyard and he won't be quiet. Just yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping for hours on end. That, that's you, bro, my ass. <laughs> you eventually stick your head out, out, of the, out of the back door because you done got tired of him and say, shut up! <laughs> and if that's your dog, he'll more than likely obey. See, in other words, when the master spoke to nature, nature said, that's him. And peace was still. See, if you have the Holy Ghost, you can ask God to speak to your storm. He will cause that which has been driving you crazy. Sometimes you have to speak to things that look like they just aren't listening. See, faith is not a feeling. Faith is persuasion that God is true and he is not a liar. He is going to do an answer somehow in some way. See my brothers 